we've made our way down to Poling, Polignano, Poli, um, Polignano, Poligno, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> which is about three hours from Vieste and an hour from Brindisi where we get the plane tomorrow to Milano, um, so we're in our tiny little apartment, I won't show you the inside because uh, it's full of suitcases and not much else because there isn't much space for anything else. But it has got a nice little balcony with a view to the sea. We've just had a wander around. And I have to say, the it's probably town. the prettiest place we've been to, actually. And it's certainly the most cosmopolitan in terms of the tourists. So most places we've been, predominantly Italian tourists, hearing lots of different languages and lots of English in this place. And and um, I wasn't going to take any video, but I did take some because the cliffs actually around the town centre are spectacular. And so is the diving if we managed to get it. Um, I hope we managed to get the last one because that was a that was a class act by that young guy that did that dive. So yeah, so we're just, as I say, finishing off out of Peritivo and then we're going to try and find the final pizza of the trip tonight which I'm sure Vassie is absolutely over the moon about <laughs> maybe we well, might find something that has pizza and other things well we'll manage one more pizza yeah okay all right <laughs> bye for now this is the famous beach at Polignano Amare, right in the centre of town. <laughs> it's heaving with people. It's very shingly as well. I don't think it'd be too comfortable to sit on. And then you've got this amazing viewpoint from over here. There everybody swimming down below. And from the sounds of it, there's some people diving off the cliffs over here. Somebody made a big splash just then. Probably can't see because of the sun. That's pretty narrow to walk on. It's not much wider than his feet. That would give you a bit of a scare if one of those birds popped out of the just in front of you. I know I was watching them. The guys that we saw clambering around the cliff edge have now decided to jump. Backwards. Oh no, he is. He's going backwards. Yeah. Flipping. I don't. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was an impressive dive as well. I mean, like he hardly, hardly made a splash when he hit the water. No, he must hit that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Walking down Via Roma, looking for something to eat. So the pizza restaurant that I'd sorted out to go to that got a good writer 
doesn't open until 7.45. It's 7 o'clock now and I am starving. Um, the next restaurant that I looked at, that looked promising, doesn't open until 8.30. So, we're going to have to compromise a little, I think. So we're just going to wander down and have a look at a couple of restaurants. Check them out. Um, but yeah, lovely little town, Bolignano Amare. I think I managed to pronounce it properly eventually. And that is looking very summery for the last time. Although I guess Milano. Milano, we might still be okay. But then when we get to Frankstonia. <laughs> Frankie Town. <laughs> Frankie Town. I think it's going to be 16 degrees maximum the day we get back. Oh, don't tell me that. Yeah. Not yet. No, I don't want to. Okay. See you later. Well, we found somewhere. Just up the street. So, yeah, I've lost count now. I think this might be the fifth or maybe even the sixth pizza for me. Um, never had a huge piece of mozzarella plumped in the middle before. Yeah. So, um... And this has got local cured meat. Pork. And Vasi yeah. has got vegetarian. Vegetariano. Um, so let's see how these do. So Paul is doing well with um, the pizza there, Marina. And he's saying is almost number two. Yeah, that's at number two. In terms of um, how yeah. good it is? I don't know, it's quite a while since I had number one in terms of ranking back in Toronto. So I'm getting a bit blurred memory wise. And in the meantime, since we ordered and we started, we were numero uno table and we're the only ones here. And at the moment, is like all the tables are full. And this is like less than half an hour since we. God's here. So, yeah, it's getting pretty full. Okay, here we have the pizza making. Bonjour. Buonasera. Buonasera. Yeah, he certainly does it quicker than we do it when we do it at home. Now they spread the mozzarella around on those. Uh -huh. We're sitting on the balcony, having the last of our amaro, and this is a this is a great scene here. So these streets are so narrow that people talk to each other across the street. So the lady down below from us has just basically got a like dining room chair that she's put out on this very narrow sidewalk pavement. And she's just sitting here and she's having a conversation with a lady across the road and up on stair who on her balcony is doing the ironing. <laughs> so yeah this is I guess pretty typical of Italian village life. Right back in Australia after the Puglia trip and time just to wrap things up I suppose. So we had three and a half weeks in Puglia, uh, moved around quite a bit and as I think I said in one of my earlier videos, one of the reasons we went there was just to get a sense as to how livable the place was for us and I think it's a bit mixed probably is the conclusion we've reached. After the first week in Toronto, I think neither of us could possibly contemplate living 
um, in Italy, never mind Puglia. Uh, yeah, we were a bit shocked by just the state of the infrastructure, how dirty the place was, uh, so much litter and rubbish around. So that, yeah, that sort of took the gloss off that first week. Um, after that, things did improve. And I think generally um, my sense is that the bigger the places are in terms of like cities and towns, the worse it is um, in Italy. So if you go to some of the smaller places and certainly the ones that um, are trying to attract the tourists, overseas tourists, then things are definitely better. Um, and, and I think if we were to um, potentially live there, then we'd certainly be looking to, to live in one of the smaller places. So maybe the issue of the, the rubbish and the, and the dirt is something that we could overcome. Um, Puglia itself, I mean, the beaches are nice. Some of the hilltop towns are, are lovely, but it's, I guess, in terms of what we're looking for, and in particular what I'm looking for, uh, it's probably not, it's probably not going to work. It's pretty flat um, and the roads are in pretty poor condition. And for me, uh, an important thing for me is to have the opportunity to go out and get my exercise through cycling. And I just would not be comfortable cycling on a lot of those roads in Puglia. Um, and because of the flatness as well, it's just not that interesting or challenging. So, so I don't think Pooley is going to work for us. So, um, I guess one thing that's, that's come out of spending the time there is it's, it's told us that we, we don't really want to spend much time in future looking at the potential to live there. But, um, I think Italy is still, uh, potentially an option for us. So I think at this point we'd probably look to go back next year uh, and spend some time in, an, in another area of Italy and just see whether or not we can sort of get comfortable with that area. Um, one option is Abruzzo, which is a bit further north, still up the sort of um, eastern side of Italy, but um, it sort of borders onto some of the uh, the mountain ranges and national parks that run up the centre of Italy. So it could be more interesting, I guess, from a perspective of somewhere to live in terms of exercise, walking, cycling, whatever. So, um, yeah, that's something to, I guess, plan for and look forward to for next year. But um, for now, that's going to wrap up the series of videos covering Puglia.